In this video, we're going to introduce Le Chatelier's principle. Now, Le Chatelier's principle was introduced by Henri Le Chatelier, a French scientist in the late 1800s. At the time, thermodynamics was pretty well established and they had a good thermodynamic understanding of chemical reactions and their stability at equilibrium. Uh, but what Henri Le Chatelier was really after was uh, a unifying principle of how chemical reactions respond to changes in their equilibrium. And so what the principle essentially says is that a reversible reaction, when pushed out of equilibrium, will respond to reestablish its equilibrium. So basically saying that, hey, chemical reactions want to be at equilibrium. They want to be at this, st this stable point where it's no longer, um, you know, changing the concentrations of reactants or products. It wants to get to that point. And if you do anything to change it, to where it's not at that point, it will fight to reestablish that equilibrium. So let's let's take an, uh, just a general example and discuss this in general. So let's say we have an aqueous um, solution A that's in a reversible reaction with some aqueous solution B, right? Um, once you've established equilibrium, uh, you can actually change that equilibrium or you can knock the system out of equilibrium by changing the concentration of either A or B. So let's say, for example, the concentration, the reactions reached equilibrium and let's say you increase the concentration of B. Well, if you increase the concentration of B, then the system is going to fight to reestablish equilibrium by shifting to where it's uh, creating more of A, right? If you increase the concentration of B, it's gonna try to increase the concentration of A in order to get back to equilibrium and vice versa, right? If you increase the concentration of A, uh, then it will try to produce more of B to reestablish the equilibrium, right? So the example that I like to use, um, if you've studied any of general physics, then you might've encountered this problem where you have two masses attached on a spring, right? You got some mass M1 and some mass M2 that's attached to a spring. And that spring has some spring constant, a restoring force that has it at equilibrium, right? So the the um, the spring is, is gonna be at some equilibrium length. And if you stretch it, right, then you feel the force of that spring trying to reestablish the equilibrium, right? Or if you try to compress it more than its, its equilibrium length, you'll feel that force trying to bring it back out as well, right? Um, so you can think of this Le Chatelier's principle as the spring of two masses, right? It's, it's what's trying to reestablish that equilibrium position right you can't stretch it or compress it too far um, it's going to try to reestablish that equilibrium right so let's let's look at a more detailed example so we can um, kind of put a button on this so let's look at an example reaction let's say we got h2o liquid plus co2 gas that is in a reversible reaction with h2 CO3, aqueous solution, right? Um, so we have a heterogeneous uh, equilibrium here. H2O uh, won't contribute in any way. Uh, so it's really gonna be on the concentration of how much CO2 we have and how much of H2CO3 we end up producing in our aqueous solution, right? So what I wanna do here in this example, I want to go through a few scenarios and, and posit what would happen to the reaction if we, if we do certain things, right? So let's say for the first case, we increase the concentration of CO2. Right, let's say we increase the concentration of CO2. How will the system respond if we increase the concentration of CO2? Well, according to Le Chatelier's principle, the system will try to reestablish equilibrium by producing more H2CO3, right? So, um, so the system will respond by producing more H2CO3 in order to establish equilibrium. Now, what the, the way that we say this, um, it, the way that chemists term this, uh, this, this type of uh, response is we say that this, the equilibrium will shift to the right, as in the equilibrium shifts to the products. So we say the equilibrium shifts 
to the right. Right, so if we increase the concentration of CO2, then the equilibrium will shift to the right. Now, if we, um, now let's say we actually decrease the concentration of CO2. So if we decrease the concentration of CO2, how will the system respond? Let's say we evacuate some CO2 out of the system. How will the system respond? The system will respond by trying to increase the concentration of CO2. So the equilibrium will actually shift left in that case, right? That means it's going to try to create more of the reactant to account for that loss in the concentration of CO2. Okay, so for the last one, let's say we increase the concentration of H2CO3. So we increase the concentration of our product, right? How will the system respond, right? So we increase the concentration of the product, then the system will respond by trying to produce more CO2. So that will also shift the equilibrium left the reverse reaction will dominate and it will try to create more uh, CO2 in order to count to account for the H2CO3 that was added. So hopefully this gives you a good feel for how systems will respond to changes in equilibrium. We knew from the expression for the equilibrium constant that the concentrations had a large effect on how the equilibrium is favored by each reaction. So changing those concentrations will change the equilibrium. And so the system is going to respond by trying to reestablish that equilibrium, right? Like I said, I really love this analogy to, um, to the restoring force of a, of a simple harmonic oscillator. So if you've studied this in physics, then you want to think about Le Chatelier's principle as that restoring force that's bringing chemical reactions back to their equilibrium points.